Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Let us come to this uh, lecture following uh, the discussions on uh, flow regimes, uh, where we looked at uh, Mach number and uh, how uh, the fluid flow uh, features vary as Mach number changes from very low Mach numbers to all the way to uh, very high Mach numbers. Uh, so, uh, the important point in uh, compressible flows is that uh, the density changes significantly and uh, also other variables like pressure, temperature also change significantly with change in uh, velocity of the flow. So, um, the point is that um, the flow contains significant amount of uh, kinetic energy and when there is uh, changes in velocity then uh, large changes of kinetic energy is uh, produced and that interacts with uh, the internal energy of the gas itself uh, producing these changes in temperature, pressure and density. So, because there is such uh, interactions uh, thermodynamics becomes uh, essential uh, in the description of uh, gas dynamic flows. Uh, the uh, understanding here is that uh, you would have already done uh, full courses on uh, thermodynamics and uh, fluid mechanics or fluid dynamics, uh, so that uh, we do not go into all the details of uh, th thermodynamics, but it is essential uh, that you know it uh, very well to understand um, gas dynamics. Similarly, uh, fluid flow equations uh, you should know uh, well, uh, but we will have a brief uh, review uh, particularly to those concepts which are important for uh, gas dynamics. So, uh, let us uh, uh, go ahead with uh, thermodynamics. So, this uh, review of uh, thermodynamics is uh, made into two uh, separate uh, lectures. So, first uh, there are some very uh, important concepts uh, that uh, we should uh, sort of clear uh, before we go into other uh, discussions. Uh, so, uh, the point is that uh, in this base fundamental course on gas dynamics, we will consider uh, only such kind of flows uh, which are uh, where uh, the Navier-Stokes equations hold or uh, the gas behaves. Um, in a, as a continuum ideally and has constant uh, thermodynamic properties and coefficients such as the specific heats, uh, specific heat at constant pressure and uh, constant volume. Uh, so, that is what we would do in most of this uh, almost entire of this course, but uh, since uh, we are also talking about various applications of gas dynamics, uh, we should be aware of uh, where uh, these whatever we discuss here, uh, though qualitatively they may be similar, you have to really be careful when applying uh, concepts from what we do in the course to cases where they may not uh, hold good. So, uh, these uh, simplifications that we do in this course uh, are valid for moderate values of uh, temperature and pressure and we will discuss uh, to certain extent where they are valid. But uh, we will not consider uh, extremely high temperatures, um, where the physical uh, phenomena will be different or uh, rarefied flows or extremely low dense uh, flows. Uh, so, um, there are uh, such concepts which we need to know, so that uh, we apply the correct analysis technique uh, when we look at a certain problem uh, that you would do in the course of uh, uh, your 
uh, applications ok. So, uh, the two uh, important concepts are uh, the concept of continuum and the concept of uh, a local thermodynamic uh, equilibrium. So, uh, in continuum, so fluid dynamics uh, uh, basically considers uh, macroscopic properties of flow. Uh, we know that uh, the gases are composed of several molecules and uh, these molecules uh, are always moving around and they are colliding with each other. This is the microscopic view of uh, these uh, uh, matter, but when we look at uh, gaseous flows, uh, we do not consider such uh, microscopic uh, properties and we look at uh, uh, the whole gas. Uh, to be present uh, as a continuum as a continuous medium ok. So, when doing that we divide uh, them uh, these uh, uh, places into small uh, volumes and uh, we consider the gas uh, the fluid flow equations uh, across uh, many such uh, small volumes or control volumes ok. So, what we do uh, consider is that the distribution of flow field variables uh, like uh, velocity, pressure, temperature, density it is continuous over uh, space and uh, time. So, the essentially you are considering a continuous uh, description you do not go into uh, 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 places where there is you do not go to the microscopic view of matter. Uh, but uh, this view is uh, valid only if there are uh, extremely large uh, significantly large number of volume uh, of uh, molecules in that given small volume that you have considered to uh, analyze the fluid flow. Uh, so, if that does not hold good then you are not in the region of uh, continuum and then you will have to look at uh, other methods to uh, describe the uh, movement of these molecules. Now, how do we uh, decide whether uh, we are in the continuum regime or we are not uh, in the continuum regime? We need a figure of merit always these uh, figure of merits will help us. So, um, that uh, figure of merit is actually the uh, Knudsen number. The Knudsen number is a ratio of uh, uh, the molecular mean free path uh, to the typical length scale that will occur in uh, the flow ok. So, uh, for example, the Knudsen numbers for a uh, for a sort of uh, typical volume which is considered over here is about uh, 1 meter uh, a cube of 1 cubic meter um, in dimensions it is uh, quite a small uh, cube, but uh, when we consider uh, at sea level. Uh, which is uh, having about a bar of pressure and um, uh, temperature is uh, uh, approximately around 290, 273 which is almost 0 degree centigrade mm, ok. So, uh, uh, you will have the number of molecules is uh, uh, very high it is about uh, 10 power 7, but at the same time if you go to an altitude which is uh, around uh, 80 kilometers in the uh, earth's atmosphere their uh, pressure drops down significantly, density drops down significantly and uh, number of molecules drops down quite significantly. So, uh, one uh, needs to consider the Knudsen number and these kind of uh, uh, altitudes are quite uh, uh, routine in uh, considering say. Uh, movement to space or access to space kind of uh, problems. So, when you are looking at such uh, problems then uh, you should be carefully considering what is the Knudsen number and uh, mm, the molecular mean free path uh, can be uh, calculated uh, based on the equations here. here and uh, a typical uh, number for this at uh, standard temperatures and pressures is uh, in the range of uh, uh, nanometers. So, normally when we consider normal flows uh, we do not actually uh, look at uh, Knudsen number because uh, we are mostly considering continuum flows, uh, 
uh, but then there may be situations when uh, this uh, continuum may not be uh, valid. So, uh, nuts and number can also be uh, related uh, with uh, the Mach number and uh, Reynolds number by uh, this equation. Okay. So, uh, it can be related to these uh, uh, fluid flow uh, uh, numbers. So, uh, generally it is considered that um, uh, when nuts and numbers are uh, small of course, uh, when we are considering continuum what we are saying is that the small volume that we have considered as uh, for analysis or the control volume for analysis is large enough to contain large number of molecules. That means, the molecular mean free path must be much much less than uh, the uh, typical uh, length scale being considered. Uh, this is uh, uh, true when nuts and numbers are uh, less than uh, about 0 0.1. So, uh, less than 0 0.1. So, small nuts and numbers mean continuum flow. If uh, nuts and numbers start becoming larger approach value of 1 and greater than that, uh, then that is not continuum flow. So, there uh, our Navier-Stokes equations uh, do not hold good and um, we should really consider other kinds of uh, um, analysis techniques to uh, do that. So, uh, when looking at uh, gas dynamic flows in various applications, uh, carefully uh, look at uh, the nuts and number uh, so that you are sure that you can apply continuum based analysis for your uh, problem. The uh, second uh, uh, important uh, concept that comes is um, uh, this is also uh, related to the microscopic description of matter of uh, gases uh, which we do not normally uh, uh, describe, but uh, it may become important in certain cases like when temperatures go really high and uh, this is quite possible in uh, the gas dynamic flows that we consider uh, and uh, that is uh, we have to consider these uh, energy considerations very carefully. Uh, so, the uh, from this, uh, this energy considerations uh, belong to uh, the way gas molecules move and uh, within itself as well as uh, around it. So, the uh, gas uh, the energy of the gas molecule can be composed of uh, different modes. They can be due to the motion of the gas molecule uh, in x y z coordinates uh, which is due to the translational energy or if you consider a diatomic uh, a molecule uh, then uh, the uh, there are two uh, uh, atomic um, uh, masses there and the they can vibrate among the distances can change and vibrate among themselves or uh, the um, uh, molecule can rotate uh, among the axis uh, certain axes and uh, the molecule is composed of uh, uh, certain electronic structure and there is an energy associated with that uh, electronic structure. So, uh, there are different modes of uh, energy in a gas molecule and uh, the kinetic energy due to translation, uh, rotational energy, vibration between atoms and uh, also the electronic structure. So, uh, what we call as uh, temperature is actually related to these uh, energies that are there in these different modes. So, if you consider each mode separately then a separate temperature can be uh, defined or assigned uh, to each of these modes, but we do not normally do it because we are considering ideal cases where uh, the, we are having lot of molecules and they interact uh, they collide with each other and they uh, sort of the energy distributes uh, uniformly among all these different modes. And so, we are considering always only a single temperature and that single temperature can be uh, sufficient to uh, describe the energy of the gas or the internal energy of the gas. And in many cases uh, in these uh, compressible flows uh, particularly at much higher speeds uh, then uh, the temperature can increase so much that uh, uh, 
uh, other modes of uh, energy become more excited than the remaining then uh, we will have differences and the consequence of that is uh, changes to the uh, specific heats of the gases okay so mm, uh, and also in certain cases the temperatures can be so high that chemical reactions like dissociation may occur like nitrogen molecule may split up into uh, nitrogen atoms and uh, if these uh, chemical reactions occur uh, they can be under uh, non equilibrium conditions also and so these high temperature effects uh, we will not consider in this uh, course that is a separate topic in itself so in this course we will say that uh, a single temperature at every point will describe uh, the energy of the uh, gas okay so uh, other uh, important concept that comes here is the local uh, thermodynamic uh, equilibrium so uh, if you consider what classical uh, thermodynamic deals with is, uh, classical thermodynamics deals with states that are in uh, thermodynamic equilibrium and thermodynamic equilibrium uh, means that uh, the two states that you are considering state A and state B uh, they have to be in uh, mechanical equilibrium, thermal equilibrium and chemical equilibrium. Mechanical equilibrium implies balance of forces, uh, thermal equilibrium uh, comes from the zeroth law of uh, thermodynamics uh, stating that if two bodies mm, are in contact and there is no flow of heat they should be in um, the same temperature they should be having the same temperature they are in thermo thermal equilibrium and um, uh, chemical equilibrium comes from the fact that uh, there is no change in the composition the molar composition of a uh, mixture and uh, uh, that is chemical equilibrium uh, but when we look at uh, several fluid flow scenarios uh, globally if you take the whole uh, fluid flow you may see there is lot of changes happening within the flow okay there you need uh, to apply certain forces to make the flow move and uh, all such things happen and there is large changes in temperature and uh, pressure and all these uh, happen so uh, how uh, so uh, the equilibrium concept essentially says there are the gradients should be very very uh, small uh, or negligible but uh, fluid flows happen only when there are gradients of pressures and uh, heat transfers happen when there is gradients of temperature so we are looking at such a flow so uh, how do you reconcile these two uh, things classical thermodynamics with uh, fluid flow is through the concept of uh, local uh, thermodynamic equilibrium so where uh, we are uh, fluid flows are always uh, analyzed by considering small uh, tiny volumes and we are saying that in each of those particular volumes very tiny volumes that we are considered uh, thermodynamic equilibrium is uh, uh, valid so that is a very local uh, thermodynamic equilibrium and uh, so th that conditions are valid in that tiny particular volume and uh, then it is interacting with other volumes so each of those volumes are in uh, thermodynamic equilibrium so uh, we are uh, going to deal with cases only where uh, the local thermodynamic equilibrium is valid uh, and it is assumed to be satisfied so um, uh, departures from uh, local thermodynamic equilibrium must be considered uh, very carefully uh, examples are when you have uh, chemical non equilibrium you have reacting flows and uh, they happen uh, at the same pace as the, the reactions happen as fast as the fluid flow happens then uh, the species changes as the, the rates of uh, formation and they change as the flow happens so uh, the set of equations that you need to consider will involve uh, separate equations for such uh, species so uh, they have to be really considered uh, carefully uh, and in this course we will not consider a departure from uh, local thermodynamic equilibrium so when we look at uh, now that those two uh, important concepts of continuum and local thermodynamic equilibrium 
have been uh, considered, we are going to consider uh, uh, cases which are in continuum and in local thermodynamic uh, equilibrium. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, these are essential definitions uh, for uh, thermodynamics and um, uh, this is just a recap and uh, for uh, more details you should uh, revise thermodynamics if you have uh, to do so. So, system is just a matter of uh, that is being considered for analysis and everything other than that is the uh, surrounding and uh, there is you can specify a boundary between the system and the uh, surrounding. Uh, there are different kinds of systems, the you have the uh, open system where uh, you can have exchange of uh, mass into the system ok. And uh, of course, there is an exchange of heat and work across the boundaries of the system. Uh, while in a closed system, there is no exchange of mass, it is only work and heat, while uh, if no work or heat is being exchanged, then you have uh, an isolated uh, system. So, uh, there are certain sign conventions which are usually followed, uh, but when heat or work is added to the system, heat work is done on the system or heat is added to the system, uh, it is uh, considered as uh, positive. And uh, we consider a, a pure uh, substance, a pure substance is a substance whose chemical composition remains uh, uh, the same uh, for uh, various changes that happens uh, to the uh, uh, object as it undergoes a process ok. Uh, so, uh, it may change phases like it can go from solid to liquid or liquid to vapor you have a uh, different change in phases, but uh, mm, it does not change in chemical composition. Uh, example is uh, just the plain water as it changes from uh, ice to water to uh, water vapor uh, and steam you have uh, it all over uh, this one. So, but uh, it still remains as uh, H2O its chemical uh, composition does not change. Uh, why this is important is because uh, we are considering in most of our classes we will consider um, um, flows with air as the medium. Uh, so, air is our gas and air is a mixture, it is it is not a single molecule like that of water. It has a mixture of molecules which, ni which has a nitrogen, oxygen as the main components um, in mole fractions it is 78 percent of uh, uh, nitrogen and uh, close to 21 percent of oxygen. Uh, you have other uh, trace elements like argon and carbon dioxide the rest are very very small, uh, but this mixture uh, behaves for most of our considerations uh, it behaves like a uh, pure substance like we do not really have to consider uh, the individual behavior of these molecules. Uh, but we will consider the uh, average uh, behavior for air and it has an average molar mass of uh, 28.6 uh, kilograms per kilo mole ok. So, uh, for all uh, practical purposes in the course uh, air is considered as a uh, pure substance uh, throughout the uh, uh, course. <coughs> so, now, let us uh, take a look at how uh, if you look at the uh, um, have a glance at the equations of uh, the flow how thermodynamics comes into picture when we consider compressible flows. For that let us just take a comparison between uh, incompressible flow and compressible flow. Uh, these equations The equations here uh, depict a typical incompressible flow of uh, constant density. That means, here density is known uh, and it is not a uh, variable. Uh, the viscosity is also known ok. Uh, so, uh, if, if you take uh, such a case uh, a typical uh, incompressible fluid flow. Uh, then uh, you have uh, the three components of velocities uh, that are unknown which is u, v and w 
and you have pressure which is unknown that is the fourth variable. So, this to describe the fluid flow you have uh, continuity and momentum equations uh, they, con they contain in themselves this momentum equation is a vector equation. So, uh, it has uh, three equations in itself contained within it. So, you have four equations. So, if you see the number of unknowns and number of equations you have a consistent set you have three unknowns of velocity and one unknown of pressure and number of equations is also four. So, to solve these equations if you are able to solve it um, you can do it if you know the boundary conditions um, and initial conditions then you can solve this uh, it is possible to solve this equation uh, as, as they are consistent uh, completely consistent and the density is uh, known in this case. Uh, but if you come to compressible flows this density is a variable now. So, along with uh, the components of velocity and pressure uh, density becomes a variable. So, now you have five variables and if you consider only the fluid flow equations which is continuity and uh, momentum uh, then you will not uh, be able to get a consistent set of equations because number of equations will be four but number of variables unknowns will be uh, number of unknowns will be uh, 5. So, you need additional equations. So, these equations um, come uh, together uh, by adding uh, energy considerations. So, you can have the energy equation ok. So, when you add energy equation uh, there uh, temperature becomes uh, an equation. So, an additional uh, um, unknown is added that is uh, temperature. So, now uh, density, pressure and temperature are unknown. So, you have uh, totally 6 unknowns with the addition of energy equation. Energy equation is a scalar equation. So, it is only a single equation. So, energy equation um, will add one more equation. So, you have 5 equations. So, you have 6 unknowns and 5 equations means you need additional equations to still solve this problem and uh, that uh, equation is supplied uh, through the equation of states. So, both the energy equation by definition of what is enthalpy here it is uh, uh, the enthalpy that comes into picture and uh, the equation of state which is uh, in this case is the perfect gas ideal equation of state P is equal to rho R T. Uh, you are bringing in thermodynamics without uh, these equations it is not possible to solve the uh, compressible flows. So, thermodynamics is an integral part of uh, uh, understanding and uh, analyzing uh, compressible flows. So, uh, we have understood the two essential concepts here um, that is continuum and local thermodynamic equilibrium and uh, uh, the importance of uh, Knudsen number and to uh, know the its value. So, that um, when you are doing the analysis you a priori know whether you are uh, applying the correct equations and uh, we have understood uh, how uh, important thermodynamics is to understand uh, uh, compressible um, flows. We are going to use air as a medium and air is considered as a pure substance in this course. So, uh, thermodynamics essentially deals with uh, uh, understanding the energy exchanges using the laws of thermodynamics and uh, these laws we will discuss in the uh, next class.